passionate, kind of awkward. Um, people don't think I'm awkward at first. They may not think you're awkward at first, but if you're a nerd, you might realize you make a lot of awkward moments in conversation. That can happen. Um, and we're very inquisitive nerds, right? So and usually the more passionate you are, the more deconstruction, deconstruct, deconstructionist. Does that sound right? We're good? We're good, right? We're good? All right, thank you, Allison. Um, so when you get to sex, how do you do it? How do you be a sex nerd? Well, anyone can be a sex nerd, first of all. It's not like an exclusive term that I copyrighted or something. You too can be a sex nerd, and it's cool. And you can have awesome sex doing it. Not that I'm not saying about my own personal life. I'm just saying. I heard. Um, so I tweeted it out yesterday, like, are you a sex nerd? Like, who, who's a sex nerd? And like, all these people were like, I'm a sex nerd. I want to be one. I totally am. I'm a geek. You know, and everyone had their way of being. And I was like, ah, as long as you're having a good time. Anyway, um, the thing about being a sex nerd is that you take that passion and then you start creating all these hacks to make your like, sex life even better. And that's what's so awesome about taking that kind of intelligence into the bedroom. Most people, when you talk about sex, immediately go into the emotion zone of like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Or like, oh, that's really hot. I'm really turned on now. I want to have sex with you, you know? And you're like, whoa, I just wanted to talk about the G-spot. I didn't need you to touch my G-spot. It's different. Um, so people who can really intellectualize sexuality tend to just kind of live in a different world than people who just go straight to like, oh, do it now. Um, it's just different. And there's no right or wrong way, but it's just, you know, it's just... It's kind of, you notice the way people process sex. Anyway, so let's stop talking about the nerd, you know, semantics and whatnot, and let's get into some sex nerding. All right. So, I did this, I've been doing sex work, sex work, sex education work for like years now, and I noticed that when I would talk to people about their issues, like, oh, I can't have an orgasm during sex, or I'd like to give a better blowjob, or like how can I go on down on a woman, woman better? I always start with many questions, like well what do you do now? Mm, at what angle do you uh, go down on that person? Um, do you use lube? How firmly do you press? And I just really break down the details of what they're doing, and then from there, I utilize what they've given me and I play with that, and then we usually work it out, and there's usually a hug at the end. You know, and they're like, oh yeah, I'll try that next time. That's awesome. Um, so I broke it down into seven variables, okay? So the acronym for this is, I realize, let's pretend there's a slide right here, um, but it's sort of like AMPS. Arousal, anatomy, angles, that's the three A's, right? Then there's moisture, and then there's movement, pressure, and speed. And the movement, pressure, and speed, often people will group into one action. Like, oh yeah, I like it, go faster, go faster. And then suddenly it's like faster and, and more pressure. And you're like, oh, that is different. That is a different feeling than what was happening just a minute ago. And so separating your variables can be very helpful when you're trying to just sort of step it up a notch in the bedroom. Um, so y these are the seven variables. Do we need those again? Yeah, all right. There's seven of them. And just remember the word AMPS, A-M-P-S. And if you just find some sexy words and apply it, then you know, you're probably figuring it out, all right. But uh, anatomy is first. Say it with me, anatomy. All right, all right. Arousal. All right, angles, very important. Moisture, all right, movement. Pressure, and speed, okay. Someday I would like to write a book on this, but I'm kind of busy talking about sex a lot, and so, but someday there might be a book on this, you know. Uh, I really look forward to the uh, pressure chapter. Um, anyway, so I've worked through thousands of people at this point using my method of just breaking down sex and deconstructing it for people, and it's really helped them a lot. So um, the thing is, is that you really should isolate every variable. Um, speed and pressure, as I said, that can be an issue grouping those together. The others are moisture and arousal. We'll assume someone is turned on, a female body, let's say, by how wet they are. Not necessarily the case, you know? So knowing someone's anatomy might be helpful to be able to tell like, oh, the clit's engorged, or they're hard, or you know, they're flushed. I mean, these are all important to tell. Like, so don't always judge moisture to be the one telling feature of arousal on someone. Little things like that. Um, and then rhythm. I've I don't know if you guys have ever been to a blowjob class, but here in Los Angeles, 
Uh, we do blowjob classes at the Pleasure Chest every every so often, and it's like Woodstock in there. Cause like everybody in LA apparently wants to know how to give a good blowjob. I don't know, it's just a thing. And I always ask people, what makes a great blowjob for you? Like male bodies, I'll ask them. And they go, uh, usually it's enthusiasm and rhythm. Those are the two things I always get back from guys. Um, enthusiasm goes a long way, and rhythm is really, I mean, a lot, you know, like, be happy to, if you are not happy being in the bedroom, get out of the bedroom, go have a sandwich, maybe you'll feel better. Like, don't you know, hopefully you're sleeping with people that you would enjoy, you know, it's just, it's important. But a rhythm is important too, and that's really working with your movement and your pressure, and, and I always say, pick a good song, and a good, like, Barry White's good for, like, foreplay, you know, like, you know, and then, like, think of a faster song, you know, when you're really getting into it, maybe some Lady Gaga, like, thinking of a song as your m sexual metronome can be very helpful. Because some people will be, like, so in their head, and they'll be like, I went to the BJ class, and I learned to do this thing, and then there's this other thing, and I know moisture, and uh, and then there's just, there's no rhythm. So, like, in, like, that's like a little hack, is just get some song you like in your head and, and work it out in terms of your rhythm. Anyway, right? Yeah, okay, all right. Huh, you can play some music, even better. Except if it's Pandora, just those commercials really kill the mood. <laughs> yeah, you have to subscribe. This is not an advertisement. This is not an advertisement. Anyway, but yeah, just work, you know. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some sex acts. I'm gonna show you like what, what, what how I go about looking at these things and how you can go about looking at these things. Because like blowjobs, like I've mentioned that a little bit. I get so many questions about blowjobs, so many. And there's always like, like for instance, no matter what, you need the bare minimum is to know people's pleasure anatomy, right? Laura Catone was just up here talking rad stuff about female anatomy. Um, and it's very important to understand things like, it's not just clit and vagina, clit and vagina, you know, and it's not just like cock head, you know, and some balls. Like there's a lot of cool stuff in there, like the, the, the underlining of, of the penis you know, you've got this really sensitive area here, the frenulum, that's your best friend if you're late for work, you know, and then it's just, and then like the shaft is really great for just moving and kneading and whatnot. Um, understanding that the shaft is basically very similar to the vagina inside in terms of like pressure and movement. Um, it may not be like, may not have acute nerve endings that are gonna like pick up like really intense like tongue flicks, you know, but some pressure can really go a long way, anyway. So, um, when it comes to angles, oh, right. You've got the head of the penis, and you've got this frenulum here, right? And you've got your mouth, all right? And then at some point, they're gonna meet each other. No, I'm not gonna put this in my mouth right now, because this is, my mom might watch this. Um, the thing is, is that people will, let's say, the guy's on the bed, and then you're like, here, right? And you're, you're doing this, and then you're trying to get it in your throat which is good for you if you can do that, great work. Um, but if the penis is curving up like this, it's just gonna hit the back of your throat. So getting in a position where it's angled to go down your throat, these are important anatomical things to think about, okay? Um, other things like that, like let's say, oh, 69ing, that's so hot, I love to 69. Good for you, great. Um, but let's say, okay, so I'm putting this puppy up in my mouth. However, the frenulum is here at the roof of my mouth, in which case my tongue is not going to be at an advantageous position to be pleasuring the frenulum, right? Um, so you gotta think about that if that's what the person likes a lot, is a whole lot of, let's say, back and forth movements with their tongue in, on this area. So a lot of times, just adjusting your angle can do wonders for a blowjob. Oh, well, that's an interesting noise. Oh, apparently we're going to see. I hope you like China. Okay. I, I, yeah, okay. Um, oh, moisture. So you can, be do, you can be giving like the best oral sex of your life, and if the moisture isn't right for the person receiving, it can totally change things. Um, people t tend to get dry mouth. So one thing you can do uh, for a blowjob is like, I know every, okay, if you just had Chinese food, maybe not the best time to gag, but a couple of good gags will totally just bring up a much thicker moisture into your mouth, like your saliva will get much thicker, and then that increases the pleasure and the slightiness of how your mouth feels around them. So knowing that, a gag or two can actually be really helpful to pleasuring your partner 
and making it much easier for you to glide. So it's not rocket science. That's upstairs. Here we're just, here we're just pleasuring each other and having a good time in the bedroom. It's easy, you know? Um, cunnilingus. Are we doing okay? We're fine? We're good? Okay. Sometimes people just look at me like I'm crazy and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm such a nerd. Okay. Cunnilingus. I just taught a class for the first time to couples who were doing the actual cunnilingus in the class, which is a total trip. It's very intimidating when everyone's all naked doing their thing. Um, and it was my first time to see how people really touched each other as I taught. And I noticed, because I was saying to really uh, warm the female up, you can do something, um, this a sex educator called Midori taught this move called the pussy hug, where you give a real broad pressure, you know, I'll, I'll grab, I mean, my hand can't totally dominate this vulva, but you just press basically and knead and knead, you know, and you can kind of do like some hula hands on the vulva, and that can really just help get the blood flowing, right, and get the moisture going, and just getting the body to realize something cool is about to happen to her vulva. Good warm-up move. I tell everyone this. I tell, like, you can all do it on your, on, your, on your arms. Take your hand. Cup your forearm. Now press. You should be pressing with the flat of your palm and relaxing your fingers over. A lot of people, when they first want to, like, do this move, they'll use their, the tips of their fingers. And, just, and that can be, it's too, of, too much of an acute movement. For, and pressure for uh, like a foreplay move. So just using the palm of your hand and really like using that, that's what you want to aim for. So just check that on your arm, make sure you're, you're doing that. Um, but what I noticed is even though I said this, even though every single guy in the room did it on their arm and I went around the room and I looked at all of them and they were all like, when they're doing it on their partners, they're all like really light and like fluffy about it. Like, oh, your pussy is so gentle and delicate. I just want to touch it like a flower. And I just, it's like, dude, like, are you enjoying, and I just said, like, are you enjoying that? Like, is that, you, is, that what, is that your thing? And she's like, yeah, you know, it's whatever. I'm all like, press firmer. And he pressed firmer. And like, not even that firm. I'm like, no, press firmer. And then she kind of like relaxed into it and was like, oh. And I was like, I, I rock. Um, and it was just such a funny thing. It was that, he, that they weren't adjusting their pressure levels. This is just a really simple thing to notice, so thank you. Oh, that was awesome. Um, so in terms of um, kind of lingus, uh, noticing that warm-up move was great. Also, even though women will say, like, oh, I don't like a lot of clit right away, you can use a lot of pressure in other areas, like to access the clit legs and whatnot. It's really about, you know, and kind of, you can do these little neat, like, gyration moments around the clit, and, and it's really playing with, with with your moisture levels and your angles, and, and doing a little dance. When it comes to your movements, there's a big difference between a circle and an oval around the clip. I like to think of it as Oreo and Nutter Butter, but that's just because I really like snacks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's just, it's like, okay, this is the clit, and go like this, you know? But if you do an oval, you're hitting the, the clitoral, like, hood more, and then you're like hitting the legs more, and there's like some labia, like you're just hitting more. So, I mean, the vulva is kind of an oval shape, you know, so just basic changes like that. Like you may have heard in 11th grade, oh man, yeah, circles around the clit, it's the way to go, it's the way to go, you know, but, you know, adjust that a little bit and you might get a whole new reaction. It's, it's, this isn't, I am not like groundbreaking, this isn't groundbreaking, but it's the stuff I talk about all the time and people don't always like break it apart like this. This is why I talk about this stuff. So. Cunnilingus. Um, anal sex. Now, there's a fun topic. Uh, in that, people either go white as a ghost or get really excited. Um, you know, I saw some of you do it. Anal sex, first of all, should be pleasurable or at least neutral. There shouldn't be any pain. That means you're doing it wrong. So just out there on the internet, you know, if anybody. And a lot of people have had very uncomfortable experiences with anal sex. But... I mean, I teach, I could talk about anal sex all day, literally. Um, but I'm not, not right now. Um, maybe later, yeah. Uh, see me at the table. But um, I'll talk about how to like, warm up someone's butt, and you have to understand the anatomy of the butt, because a lot of miscommunication can happen if people are not understanding what's going on back here. So learning the anatomy of the ass is probably more important than any other pleasure anatomy, because 
a lot of people think that, okay, my butthole, and then just poop for days. Like, that's all that's happening. And then you want to put what in there? Like, that is, for a lot of people, that's what's going on. And just a very simple anatomy lesson about the fact that, okay, you have tight muscles at the open, opening, then you have this runway of like eight to 10 inches of just pure fun emptiness, and then your colon starts, and that's where your digestive system usually stores things. So you actually have this wonderful play area that is totally just hanging out and waiting for you to like have some fun, but people don't know that. So anatomy knowledge is just the bare minimum to understand that stuff and go for it. Moisture is incredibly important there. But one thing that people don't usually talk about is the importance of angles when entering someone's ass. Everyone make a stunt butt. That's a fist, right? All right. So let's pretend this is your anal opening. These muscles are very, very tense. They have a lot of stress in their life, OK? They're very tight, OK? If you want to get in there and you poke it, what happens to your butt? All right, it's like a sea urchin. It's like, no, no, <laughs> right? You know, we don't want that, all right? And so the thing is, is like a lot of people, I mean, whether you want to put something in like vaginally or anally, a lot of people just want to like slide in there, like, oh, there's a space, I want to get in there, right? But you want to work with the body. So angle is very important. I'm gonna use my pinky, well, I, I'm holding things. Okay, so pinky, it's a very small penis or something. Um, instead of poking at the butt, I was always taught in, in our sex ed stuff to put the pad of the finger or the penis or the toy, whatever, at an angle and then tip in. I'd been told this, but I thought about it. I really thought about it. And I realized the reason that this is so effective is because what you do is you create a pivoting point mid-finger against the sphincters, these tight muscles, and by pressing, and I mean really pressing, and then pivoting, like, you know, like shifting inward, you're basically doing like a secret unlocking function with your sphincters, right? Because then your body's like, oh yeah, we can do this. Like you create like a simple, like you're a team now. So, I mean, I can, it's a whole class. So I'm not gonna go into that, even though I really want to right now, I'm not. But what I want to tell you is the ass hack I worked out recently. Because like I usually like, okay, three minutes, you know, like massage and then a plug and then you do this and you do that and then now you can have anal sex. But then I get, got all these guys who are going out to like the clubs in West Hollywood who are like, all right, I'm gonna meet a guy, back alley, and I need something very large in my ass like two minutes in. How do I do that without hurting myself? And I'm like, you can't. Ugh. And then I realized, well, wait a minute, maybe you can. So what I did was I took a plug, okay? I'm a professional. Okay, don't try this at home unless, you know, you really know your body. But I took a plug, I mean, or anything really, like this, you know, dildo. And I, what I did was, I was like, okay, what if I did that hack where I go in at an extreme angle, like, like this. And then I just start gyrating around and just really like pressing. Basically, I dreidled into my ass, is what I did. Okay? With no pain, lots of lube, Lots of breathing, very slow, and just like millimeter by millimeter, and just like got in there. And I was like, and I was just like, oh my god, this is awesome. Uh, and so, I mean, not that I'm going to have back alley sex in West Hollywood, but now I feel like I have an answer to those guys when they ask me. Uh, it's about angles, so that's why sex nerding can be very helpful to people, uh, etc. So, anyway, that's that. Uh, sex toys. Okay, and I'm just, this is me just nerding and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to talk about the rabbit for a moment because uh, this is a very misunderstood sex toy. All right? People look at it and immediately they think, oh, no, or oh, yes. Like, they just, it's a very emotional toy. People get very emotional about these things. Um, but if you, you look at it and you don't know what it is, it can be very confusing, but it's very simple. Inside portion, outside portion. Outside portion vibrates. Inside portion does not vibrate usually. It usually moves. Let's see if this has batteries in it. Ooh, yeah, okay. So this moves and there are beads about two inches in from the opening. Why? Well, if we'd studied our pleasure anatomy, we'd know that the beads are right around the G-spot area. There's not a huge angle there, but still it creates some sensation, which is quite nice. And then you have this movement that's going on deeper in. The vibration is outside because that's where a lot of the nerve endings.